Through the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, be always in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. It's nice to be back here. Um, I'm a new face to the vast majority of you, I think. I was ordained here 41 years ago um, and grew up here. Um, So it's nice to be back. These readings speak about a variety of things and how we are to live as faithful people. In this first lesson, David, who reigned at about 1,000 BC, has now gathered all the tribes of Israel. And so he has taken the ark, which contained the Ten Commandments, among other things, and brought it to Jerusalem. And there was great joy and festivities. And I was trying to think of a parallel I'm, I live in Ann Arbor, and it's the home of the other U of M. And it would be as if that school won the Rose Bowl, which almost never happens. And when it did, the once I can remember, we were all joyful and we, I don't know that we really danced with symbols and such, but we were gleeful and made it known to everybody. And David did it even more with 30,000 people following him and the ark to Jerusalem. And so um, most everybody was excited about this except for the daughter of Saul and she despised him, which is not a very good aspect of being a faithful person. But what I thought was wonderful is that it notes that David prepared a meal for everybody with meat and raisins and bread and everybody ate and then they went home happy and full. And in this psalm it speaks of the glory of God and the faithfulness of God and how we have received a blessing from God. In this reading from Ephesians, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, which is in current um, country of Turkey. And it was the fourth largest city in the ancient world at the time of Jesus. And it was a city that was filled with people from many different religions. Um, many gods with a small g were worshipped. And then there was the church of the Ephesians, the Christians, which was rather small but growing. And so Paul is encouraging them by telling them that they are children of God and that we have been possessed by God by our faithfulness and that God has redeemed us has forgiven us for all the things we ought not to have done. And in this uh, gospel reading, King Herod, who was not a nice fellow, sees Jesus and assumes it must be John the Baptist again, that he has been raised from the dead, and then goes on to the story of how he had John the Baptist killed and beheaded. And so as I think about these readings, we're given instances of times when people were faithful and growing in their faith and in their belief in God, and times when people had done wrong and needed to be forgiven. And so it's relevant for us because all of us, of course, have been needing confession, needing to acknowledge that which we've done wrong, and knowing that we are forgiven by God. That we can risk acknowledging our wrong because we know we've already been forgiven. 
and that we're called to love everyone. And God in his wisdom did not ask us to like everyone, but to love. And that's the challenge. Part of the challenge I find is because it means I have to love myself in order to be able to love other people. I can't love you until I know that I'm loved. So that's the first challenge. Accept that you are loved, both by God, by everyone here, and let that be absorbed into your soul. That makes you a much more joyful person. Not always happy, but deeper, joyful. And that enables us to survive the tough times in life. Because I know that God loves me, and there are times when I say a very short prayer. God, you got me into this mess. You got to get me out of it. <laughs> and I believe that. God will help me, will find a way for me to get out of some difficult situation, whether it was an argument with somebody or something else. And as Herod learned, you can't hate people and be a good person. I mean, he was known for his evil ways oftentimes. And he asks Herodias, or he asks the daughter, what do you want? And he said, I'll give you even half my kingdom. And so she goes to her mother and says, so what do I ask for? The head of John the Baptist because he had criticized Herod. And so um, she goes and or Herod asks the soldiers to behead him and brings back on the platter the head. Fortunately, we don't know what happened after that. But he only know, Herod only knows that it was John the Baptist and that um, so he assumes he must have been resurrected. But no, it's Jesus that he's hearing about now. And that is also, and later in the uh, Gospels, we'll hear that he had to get rid of Jesus because Jesus was a threat to him. Jesus' truthfulness and compassion and healing abilities were a threat to Herod. And Jesus had no problem criticizing, correcting people who did and spoke wrong and false to hoods. So the challenge for us is to be open to the word of God, to listen more than we talk. And as my spiritual director has told me more than once, God gave me two ears and only one mouth and used that perspective <laughs> to listen more than I talk. As an extrovert, that's tough. But we're called to be quiet and listen to God. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? With whom am I called to do it? That's the challenge. And then to love people, to forgive them. Again, my spiritual director said to me, when I didn't want to forgive somebody, pray for the desire to forgive until you can forgive. Oh, she spoke truth too often to me. But that's the challenge for us, to forgive, to pray for people, to love them, whether we like them or not, and to then put our faith into action. How we treat other people 
will convey to people what our faith is. So if I'm not a nice person, it's hard to convey that I believe in a loving God. So when I am loving, then people say, oh, that person has some faith. That's what all of us are called to do. To be fed with the body and blood of Christ, to be nourished by his love, to let the Holy Spirit dwell within us, that guides us, and then proclaim joyfully our faith by how we live, by how we treat others, by how we forgive. And that's the challenge, I think. So this week, in my little parishes, I always give them an assignment. This week, think of somebody you need to forgive. And if you just can't, pray for the desire to forgive. If you run into somebody, not literally, but if you run into somebody, speak the love of God. Sometimes it's just as simple as hello. If you do that on the street and walk up to somebody and say, hello, you'll see some real surprise because we're not used to talking to each other nicely when we don't know the people. I love doing that. And be thankful. There's a priest in Flint um, that I've gone to some of his services when I didn't have a Sunday service, and I was shocked. He came down the center aisle with a full procession. He turned around and he thanked everybody for coming to church. I gotta tell you, it had never occurred to me to do that. But thank you all for coming. He taught me how to say thank you far more times than I usually did. To go up to people who were cleaning the airport, for instance, thank them that the place is clean. When somebody holds the door for you, we're good at thanking them for that. But for all the little things we see, express your thankfulness of God's love by how you thank other people. They're little things oftentimes that make a huge difference in people's lives. Be thankful both to God and to other people. Be thankful for your own faithfulness and love above all. Amen. <laughs>